इंडियन नेशनल एस्ट्रोनॉमी ओलम्पियाड टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन क्वेश्चन फोर द स्काई मैप शोज स्काई अब नागपुर विच इज ट्वेंटी वन डिग्रीज नॉर्थ सेवेंटी नाइन डिग्रीज ईस्ट एट नाइन ए एम ऑन फर्स्ट फेब्रुवरी ट्वेंटी फोर्टीन इफ यू आर नॉट यूज टू यूजिंग स्काई मैप्स इट इज इम्पॉर्ट टू नो दैट द स्काई मैप इज यूजली सीन लाइंग डाउन ऑन द ग्राउंड विथ फीट टू साउथ facing the sky with map in your hand thus east is on the left of the map and west is on the right and you have to mark various points on the sky so as described in the map you first know the directions this is your north this is your south this is your west and this is your east The celestial equator is just a projection of Earth's equator in the sky. It will be locus of points which are equidistant from north and the south pole. Draw the equator on the map approximately and mark it as Q. As it is about angle is away from pole, it has to pass through the eastern point. It has to pass through the western point, and it should be somewhere here on the. As it should be, and it is away from the pole. So connecting these three in a smooth curve, this will be an approximate equator. B. The ecliptic is imaginary earthly part of the sun in the sky. Mark this approximately on the map and mark it with E. We say it is approximate yearly path of the sun in the sky. Sun, you would be knowing that would pass through the zodiacal constellations. You can start noticing the constellations here. You can find Aquarius, Capricornus, Sagittarius, Scorpius. Libra and Virgo. This will be your. This is your equator. Equator Q, and this is the ecliptic P. E. Mark approximate position of the sun on the map as S. There are two ways of doing it. One way is to simply notice the time given is 9 a.m. If we say sun approximately rises between sometimes 6 and 7 a.m. and it should cross the meridian at around noon, so we would expect it somewhere halfway between rising and meridian, so somewhere here. Or You can remember that the vernal equinox point is in Pisces. We are talking about first February, which is about two months before that. So it is two three months before that. Before that, again we reach Capricornus. So somewhere in the Capricornus would be Sun. F. Yesterday was a new moon day. Mark the current position of the moon on the map as N. Now, yesterday was new moon day. That means yesterday, sun and moon were coincident. In one day, sun's position doesn't change appreciably, but moon's does. You would recall from your textbook that moon rises about 15 minutes later every day. So, if yesterday it had risen with the sun, today it will be slightly later than sun. So, sunrise will happen first, and moon will rise after that. So, moon should be somewhere behind sun, probably somewhere here in Aquarius. Which star 
was very close to zenith at 6 a.m. today. Mark it on the map as n. Now, as we said, all stars will go around in roughly circles around the pole star. So, and the star which was at close to zenith, zenith is a central point here. The star which is at zenith at 6 a.m., that is 3 hours before this, would be halfway to the setting at this time, at 9 o'clock. So, if we say that all the circles are going around this way, around the pole star, so halfway between zenith and setting, you see a star here, which is a reasonable candidate for being marked as N. Last, draw a line across the sky showing horizon line as at 7 a.m. today and mark it as H. This one, you have to think carefully. We say that this is a region of never setting stars. So even at 7 a.m., 2 hours before, some of these stars will be at the horizon. Maybe the stars which are about 40 degrees here, these will be still at horizon. So horizon will start from here. We will go this way. The stars which had risen just two hours before are already sitting here, close to the circle. So the line will roughly cross the south pole and somewhere it will go here. So roughly speaking, this will be the horizon line as of 7 a.m.